one of the things that I talk about in my novel is the Clarence Brandley, um, the Clarence Brandley incident, and that occurred about 30 years ago, and the background of the story is Clarence Brandley, um, He's from Duggan. He was working at Conroe High as a janitor. Um, basically, he was the only black guy working there. He was working with like three other white janitors. And what happened was the uh, white janitors, they ended up raping and killing this girl. And, you know, they framed... Clarence Brandley, but the fr the frame it wasn't even a good frame. Like the police, the judges, the DA, the lawyers, everybody knew that Clarence Brandley wasn't the one that raped and killed that girl. Even if they don't want to admit it, they know everything about the whole case was um well like symbolic of what Montgomery County is and it was just a nefarious way to an underhanded way to destroy another black human being so you know they did whatever they had to do all the crookedness that comes along with um, destroying a black man taking a black man away from his family taking away black man freedom taking away a black man rights they did whatever they had to do to make sure that Clarence Brandley was um, indicted and sentenced and after he served maybe 10 years in jail now all of a sudden uh, we have evidence that he is not guilty. Um, I think one of the white men came out and finally confessed. And he was allegedly, he was there, but allegedly he wasn't the one who, I guess he didn't really uh, participate in the rape or whatever. I don't know how that goes. And I think they were from Cut and Shoot. From Cut and Shoot, right. So anyway... Clarence Brandley was released, um, and to this day, the state has not gave, given him any um, um, compensation for the time they took away from his life. And I know what they did too. Also, they um, they was trying to charge him for back child support for the ten years that he did in jail. Be because of a uh, racist county, and you really can't just pay a man for ten years of his life. But the state owe him that, the county owes him that, and they won't do it. And it's funny because after the even after the man came out and confessed, the family of the the white family of the girl, they still believe that Clarence Brantley is the one who raped and killed their daughter. Like, they are so racist that they want Clarence Brandley locked up. they rather see a black man locked up than the real people who killed, raped and killed their daughter. Because the people who raped and killed their daughter were white. The same skin um, color as them. They believe in the goodness of whiteness so much that they are willing to overlook the fact that that these men are the ones that raped and killed their daughter all so uh, because they cannot stand to see a black man that was falsely accused of doing that deed being set free and that is what one of my poems is about it um and it's it's more it's not just about uh, Clarence Brandley the poem it's about I guess like revealing like some of the racist nature, the racist history that um that we encounter throughout the years growing up in uh, Montgomery County in Conroe, uh, specifically within Duggan, which is supposedly a black community, but 
or was a black community, but you know, it's it it was always ran by ruthless white overlords, and that's the way I see it. So Clarence Brandley is really like a poem, a dedication to the man himself, but it is it is also a dedication. Or like kind of like a war cry for the people of Duggan to open their eyes and not let these types of injustices um, continue to go on um, anymore. That one, you know, when it happened, you know, people didn't sit by idly. They were they were protesting. Um, I remember growing up. With uh, seeing people wearing the Clarence Brandley T-shirts and and it was like a real sense of community, and I feel that that's that kind of that has kind of died out within Duggan, and that's um one of the messages that I hope to convey with the uh, Clarence Brandley um, poem.